pumped too, man. I'm pumped too. Congratulations. But the next matchup coming up is going to be Ture versus Abar. It's our last upper bracket match of the day. And we're going to send it right over the desk to get right in the action. Thank you very much, TJ. I'm back once again, but this time I'm joined by the one and only Brian Kibler. Brian, I haven't gotten to cast with you yet this weekend, so this is <laughs> yeah. exciting for me. But uh, after that last matchup, I don't know how we can quite that top was, it. That was crazy. You know, I, was, I was watching uh, you know, in, the, in the back there, and uh, it was epic, to say the least. But we will be seeing another great match here. We have Abar versus Ture. Uh, Ture was a quarter finalist at the 2014 World Championship. He actually lost to eventual runner-up Tiddler Celestial there. Uh, we actually saw uh, Abar on stream yesterday where he took hooked down Terrence M uh, with some pretty good draws out of all of his decks. So. I, I bet he was pretty happy about that. We also saw Ture on stream as well who actually took out Chalky who uh, won DreamHack Austin, was a representative in the Winter Championships for the Americas. So two heavy hitters here, and we see warrior bands on both sides. What not do you really, think about that? Not really unexpected. We've seen, uh, as you mentioned a couple of times, more warrior bands than many classes being played, period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, think th I think the stat was there were 355 warrior bands yesterday. The next highest band wow. class, I believe, was Shaman at around 90 to 100. So... Uh, Far and away, the both most popular and most feared class in terms of uh, how people are using their band in these lineups. Yeah, and those two definitely go hand in hand. Um, but we are not going to be seeing a warrior played in this match. Instead, Abar has the Druid, Shaman, and Warlock, and Tere has the Druid, Hunter, and Warlock. We haven't seen a Hunter in quite a bit. Yeah, we actually uh, saw quite a few Hunters back before the release of uh, Karazhan, back in the, the uh, Summer Championship, uh, Sidonia and Rosti both played Hunter in their uh, lineups they, they played to the finals, but we haven't really seen it so much. Uh, the, the lineup that has really defined most of this season uh, has been what Abar is playing. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dragon Warrior, the Yogg Druid, the Agro Shaman, and the Zoo deck. Uh, the, the Hunter tends to fall behind a little bit against the more aggressive decks, though Ture is playing a particularly anti-aggro version of Hunter. Yeah, he's got some really interesting techs in there. Two explosive traps and a dread scale. Uh, we actually didn't get to see his Hunter yesterday. I believe Chalky Bandit on mm -hmm. stream. So going to be interesting to see how that does for the first time. Um, and then from Abar, really just interesting to note that his token druid is a strict token druid. There is no Yogg Saron. Um, so not going to see any Yogg shenanigans from him, but Tere does have the Yogg in his druid. So fear not, Brian. There may be some yogging in our future. Uh, amusing note, Tere's token druid deck actually doesn't even include Violet Teacher. <laughs> And uh, th there, was, there was some discussion. I think TJ actually talked mm -hmm. to Ture, and he was saying, you know, weird choice not to put Violet in your deck. He's like, yeah, I kind of forgot to put it in my list. He's playing a couple of copies of uh, Druid of the Claw. Mm -hmm. And we were actually talking when he was uh, playing in, in the last match against Chalk. He was like, how is he fitting this? It's like, oh, he just doesn't have Violet Teacher in his deck. Like, how do I have so much room for these Druid of the Claws? Well... I forgot my four drops, I, but... I actually heard a, a funny anecdote that apparently a player who uh, registered, uh, submitted the, the combo Worgen deck mm -hmm. for the preliminary, he just forgot to include a charge in his deck. And he, he played his first oh, match, he's like, no. oh, I can't believe charge is just the last card in my deck and draws the last card and it's not charge. It's like, oh, well... <laughs> And his opponents just looked at his list like, this, this deck can't win. <laughs> so, so I'll, I'll let your warrior it. through. This one's not getting banned. Your deck can't do anything. Oh, my goodness. That'll so. teach you to double and triple check your lists before you submit them. Yeah. Yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, in this case, we don't have any Worgen Warriors. We do, however, have a Cthune Warrior uh, coming from Tare's side of the match. It seems to be rather late game oriented. He has Gorhal as well as Doomcaller. So the dream uh, to be player Cthune. Uh, have it die, brand doom caller, two more Cthunes, and that's a lot of missiles. Yeah, I actually, the, the Cthune version of Warrior, which sadly we won't be seeing because uh, the Warrior is banned here, uh, really is a much more interesting version of Control Warrior in my mind because it has the tools to end the game. In many cases, people's approach to beating Control Warrior, you know, for instance, like you're playing Priest against Control Warrior. It's like, okay, I'll entomb your big threats, mm -hmm. and then I'll just, you know, somehow win the game. If you're playing... Uh, with that strategy against a Cthune warrior, th they can even, if they have the coin, wait pretty much the entire game and play Emperor and then play Bran, Coin, Cthune, Kill You. 
That's just <laughs> that's just a play that's available to them, mm -hmm. and it really changes the dynamic of what is has historically been a very reactive and very sort of attrition oriented deck. But no real attrition or grindy decks here. We have Zoo versus Agro Shaman. You know, it, after the last match, I, I'm almost happy to see maybe a bit of a, a quicker. A quicker <laughs> matchup, just a little that bit. That was, uh, you, you know, playing through the Paladin Mirror twice in a row, definitely a little slower than what we're going to see in this game. Uh, though Abar looking to have a pretty slow start here. Uh, he has no one drops and only a Flame Tongue Totem for two drops to start things off. Uh, he's going to have to just go ahead and pass his first turn, unless he wants to send a message with Rockbiter Totem, just right to the face for three. Three damage to face. You're a zoo deck, but you know what? I'm going <laughs> to kill you even faster. That's. That's some mind games right there, but no, he, he decides to, to save the rock better weapon. Probably the better play. And Tare's hand is okay. It's uh, certainly not the strongest zoo hand. Soulfire in the opener is not really what you want to see, but that power overwhelming can come in handy. Soulfire is actually a reasonable card against the aggressive shaman decks because it does offer you a way that you can clear out an early totem golem without having to lose any of your own board. This is a, speaking of which, there you I, go. I just say cards and they appear on the screen all of a Let sudden. Let there be totem golems. All right, hold on, let me try it. Deathwing. No, it didn't work. Ah, curses. All right, but here, I mean, Tere is going to, I think, use the Abusive Sergeant because he has an easy clear here. Uh, but it can offer you, in a lot of spots, the ability to, to get that removal in, which might otherwise be difficult for you to pull off. Uh, but this is a matchup which typically already favors the aggressive, sh uh, the aggressive Warlock deck, simply because they're able to get out to fast starts and have good ways to pressure their opponent's board. Abar here having a really slow start to begin with is certainly not going to uh, be in a great position to turn that around. Yeah, it's it's not nearly as good as uh, what we were seeing from him yesterday uh, in his match versus Terrence. It was a very quick 3-0. Tere, however, had a much longer match. He went up 2-0 versus Chalky, and then Chalky brought it back 2-2. Two two. Uh, Tere did end up winning that, however, so Evar does, he's got the Flame Wreath Faceless on four. I mean, that's always nice, but Tere does have a pretty easy way to answer it. Yep, Jure does pick up Forbidden Ritual, and I think we very well might just see him play it here for three one ones. Mm -hmm. his, the rest of his hand pretty weak, and Forbidden Ritual helps enable the Sea Giant in his hand, uh, getting it down to six cost if a bar play were to play, say, uh, Feral Spirits or a minion plus a totem. Uh, he could potentially drop that Sea Giant next turn, but I expect we may see everyone's favorite seven seven for four. Everybody's favorite, well, the only one for four, but uh, I, I guess that automatically makes it everybody's favorite, too. Uh, I'm just Eerie Statue. Oh, you know what? I, I there suppose is that's Eerie someone's statue. favorite 7-7 seven, hmm. seven for four. I mean, you've played quite a bit of Priest. Have you tried that that self-silence Eerie Statue We don't have yet? Purify yet. So. Oh, man. All right. Well, well next week, we'll, we'll talk about yeah. it then. All right. Well, Flame Wreath Faceless does come down, and this does not quite enable the Sea Giant. Uh, but there is a Direwolf Alpha for Tere, which gives great. excellent trading potential alongside that power overwhelming in his hand. So this is pretty just a nightmare situation for Abar. He's just behind and th he's overloaded for next turn and it's not getting closer. Tere is going to have a really nice trade. Put that Direwolf so next to the Abusive Sergeant. Awesome. Power overwhelming trade really well up into that Flame Wreath Faceless. And then he can even go ahead and put down the Argent Squire on the other side of the Dire Wolf. So he does have something benefiting from it on both sides of the board. And then that, like you said, will just lead right into that Sea Giant on the next turn. Decides to instead uh, place the Dire Wolf in between two of the tokens. Yeah, I think he, he's looking to, here he's ended up trading multiple tokens off, but mm -hmm. saving his uh, abusive, perhaps because the abusive can trade directly into a single uh, token from, or a single wolf from Feral Spirits. Yeah, this is this is fine just as well. He's trading off two minions, but that abusive sergeant does get a more favorable trade. So in this case, uh, still keeping himself in a very favorable position. It does uh, not make the Sea Giant automatically active for the next turn. However, it, it is he reliant does. on a bar playing something. Yeah, he he did trade off multiple minions, which does get him farther away from Sea Giant. Uh, I expect, I mean, Ebar will at bare minimum play, uh, use his hero power here to create a totem. So. Tere probably feeling fairly confident that he can uh, he can get that sea giant down in the following turn. <laughs> Just doing my my Morgul impression. Morgul spot on. Morgul may be my favorite uh, my favorite of the hero skins. I don't even have him yet. Really? No. That's, have you have you seen when when Morgul? Uh, 
He's uh, rather when Sir Finley has played against Morgul. No, I haven't. He's what like, happens? oh, it's like, hey, hello, old friend. Shall we have tea after the match? I love when they do yeah, that. Whenever Illidan comes down versus Druid, which is very rarely. Yeah, that but, never uh, happens. <laughs> yeah, but you, you still love to imagine that uh, the brothers are not having a great time. All right, well, yeah, whatever. Speaking of not having a great time, Abar here is now facing down Sea Giant from Teray, uh, who is going to be able to clear off this entire board once again. He's kind of debating exactly how he wants to do it. He he does have his abusive sergeant, which he can use to clear out one. He could use his other two minions to take out the other and then just drop the sea giant. He could, if he wanted to save minions on the board, play. Oh, oh, oh my goodness, dear. Teray. Teray, we see him just. Oh. oh no! I mean that is that's huge. That's Teray went completely. From, Teray went from being able to play an eight eight this turn to life tapping. Wow. This, that, this is a disaster for Teray. I mean, and that's just a, a, a pure oversight. Yeah, I no, mean, th this is just sim simply just sequencing your turn incorrectly. Clearly, just getting ahead of yourself, saying, "Okay, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to figure out what else I'm going to do." But that is absolutely a huge mistake from Teray here. Oh and you know, he's shaking his head. He's still in a solid position. Yeah, fortunately uh, for him, he's got you know ten damage burst from hand with another eight on board, so it's still looking good, but if Avar had some way to punish this, then that, that absolutely could have been game losing for Ture. Uh, but it doesn't look like he does, so Ture is still going to pick up the win here, even after just that really terrible oversight there. Yeah, I mean, Ture here, you know, he's he's gotta be really sort of checking himself right now and, and, and just ensuring that he's able to keep his composure after that kind of that kind of misstep because Hey, we see we see a little bit of smile on his face there as you know he he knows that that was a massive yeah. blunder that really could have cost him. No, and I mean that's just sort of where the zoo is already favored against the shaman, and then when the shaman doesn't draw any one drops, when the two drops are easily traded into by the zoo's minions, then it's it's so very easy for the zoo to just completely push the board initiative. And and uh, Tere had Abar down at you know 16 health on turn six, which yeah. is really very fast. <laughs> Um, so fortunately for him, not playing the Sea Giant on turn five did not end up costing him the game, but he's definitely going to want to slow down and really think through those well, turns. The, the thing is, he actually took a, a while. He, you know, he, he was he was sitting there you know, debating, I, I think, the possible combinations of attacks, yeah. exactly how he wanted to do this. Did he want to use the, the Soul Fire to preserve uh, some of his minion presence on board? And then just kind of missequenced things. He just went attack, and then suddenly the Sea Giant in his hand is no longer lit up, and... Mm -hmm oh no, what have I done? Yeah, and you could see it on his face. He realized immediately that that was a huge mistake, um, but maybe just a little bit a little bit too concerned with trying to make the best possible trades and forgetting that he also has to play a card that turn. But <laughs> it all worked out for him. Teray is still going to go up 1-0 in this match over Abar, and uh, it's not going to be another 3-0 for Abar, but... That just means it's going to be a good match, hopefully. Yeah, and typically speaking, the the zoo deck in each of these lineups is generally the strongest of those decks in in, in the way that these uh, I think the dynamic matches up. Though Teray's very anti aggro hunter deck, it's kind of an X factor. We don't really yeah. you know we don't really have a lot of data or experience with how exactly dread scale double explosive trap <laughs> hunter <laughs> matches up. Yes. But we're gonna find out now as Teray is using his hunter deck against Abar with his shaman. All right, but this shaman. Common hand from Abar is definitely what he wanted to see oh, last yeah. game. This is fantastic. Just saved it up for this game. Absolutely. Didn't draw any totem golems last game. I'll draw two this game. Why not? Make it up for it. It all evens out one totem golem per game. Even picks up the flame juggler. So a phenomenal early hand for Abar and Tare. Ooh. Oh my goodness, that hand. Kind of like is... the, the polar opposite of last game, where Tere yeah. had a, had a great draw, and now now he has a bunch of stampeding kodos and nothing that costs less than three. Well. Uh, Abar has pretty much all he can ask for. He can coin out a Totem Golem into even Sir Finley to follow up the next turn, which uh, has the potential to be meaningful in the matchup. And wow. it will be Totem Golem. Ugh. I'm just trying to do my impressions. You like my, my Morgul impression. I so. do. I think this one might have been even better. Oh, I, I appreciate don't know. That. I, would, I would have to hear him again, maybe maybe side <laughs> maybe in a recording. I mean, maybe you be, can put that on YouTube and then we timely. can compare. You have, to have that, you have to have it with the the mm. playing of the uh But it, this see oh he drew a Argent Squire. I was I was gonna try and do this for Finley, but I don't actually even know Argent Argent Squire's like for the light or something. I, I don't even remember. Well we might find out. 
I, I certainly can't do the that's voice the thing. on I always cue, and have, I don't even really remember. I always have the game sound turned down. Not all the way, but it, it's definitely low, and then I've got I a stream the on sounds. the other monitor. I do, too, but you got to multitask sometimes. The light protects, the light protects me. The light I did protects know that. Me. I did know that. <laughs> I mean, right, we've well. heard it a million times, but there's just so many sounds going around in our brain. And that dread scale. All right, well, it's getting a little bit of work done. Clears right. up the Divine Shield and gets a little bit of damage on the Totem Golem. But not Bar really just... quite enough, though, since Tere, you know is already behind an excellent draw from Abar. Abar just has the option to uh, use his Rock Biter plus another Totem Golem mm -hmm. and just really solidify this board position. And Tere still has just a really awkward hand. That would put Tere on, goodness, if he doesn't draw a four drop, an infested wolf would be great. He might just be forced to kill command the three three totem golem and then still doesn't have anything to play on the following turn except for that unleash the hounds, which goodness, when you don't combo it with something, when there's high health minions on board, it's yeah. really just ineffective. Unleash is great against like a uh, zoo deck that plays Forbidden Ritual. It's not so good against a bunch of totem golems. And mm -hmm. yeah, Teray here. I, mean, I think we might just see Kill Command. We, we might just see that Totem Golem d go down thanks to the one damage from the, the Dread Scale. Houndmaster doesn't accomplish too much. Can Houndmaster accomplishes shoot. pretty much the same thing as the Kill Command. Well, it, it, you, you're guaranteed that your opponent is getting damage to the face if they want it next turn, and mm -hmm. you have the potential of losing your Houndmaster to an abusive sergeant or just some sort of removal spell before it gets to actually trade. So it looks like Teray... Uh, Debating a little bit, Kill Command does take out the Totem Golem, so slowing down the clock from Abar a little bit, but uh, this is really not the position that Dre wants to be in, and there's an Abusive Sergeant that would have dealt with the Houndmaster easily. Yeah, the actually exactly what Teray just had to do. That Houndmaster would have gotten really severely punished, but Abar is still in a fantastic position. Tere going to be able to take out that Finley or the Argent Squire with a Kodo on next turn, cementing himself with a 3-5, and those are some really bad discover options yeah, for Abar. Not what Abar is looking for here. This is a matchup that's much more about uh, establishing and maintaining your board presence than it is about just burn. Uh, and he doesn't really want to be, he's, on the, he's the aggressor here. He's the one who's trying to win the game before Call of the Wild takes things yes. over. So he does choose the heal. I'm a little bit surprised that he chose that over Reinforce, uh, since being able to make one ones each turn would give him uh, a little bit of an extra clock, though it does match up very poorly against Unleash the Hounds and the explosive traps that he knows are in Teray's deck. Yeah, I would also be inclined to pick uh, the Reinforce just because it lines up very well with Flame Tongue Totem, but knowing that Teray has two Explosive Traps, he has Ooh. two Unleash the Hounds. Speaking that, of... That bar has so much damage. Yeah, that, that, that second Lava Burst drawn, he has... That's uh, 18 exactly if you use it all. He doesn't have quite enough mana to do it just yet, so I would, uh, I would expect to see just a Abusive Sergeant and then the rest of the damage just all go face. He doesn't even need to Lava Burst this turn. There's no healing yeah. in the Hunter deck, so there's no reason he needs to sort of turn his uh, hand face up, just go ahead and heal himself. And yeah, no matter what Teray has here, uh, Abar has him covered with those two Lava Bursts, so. All right, that's just gonna be it. Put the chapel on your head. Abar has 10 damage directly from those Lava Bursts, six mana exactly, and Teray, though it looks like he was coming back into this game, uh, that direct damage is just going to be too much for him to deal with. Yeah, even if Juggler Unleash completely clears this board, it does not matter. Lava Burst plus Lava Burst in Abar's hand uh, is going to be able to finish the job next turn. So while these shots may look exciting, they have no bearing on the actual outcome of this game as uh, Lava Bursts are heading directly to Teray's face uh, that will be evening up the series right about now. Okay, count to 10. Oh, yeah, there it goes. There, you there go. goes. I, I, I was a little too fast. A little too no, fast. no, you, you were perfect. He was just uh, I would have snapped making sure that five, it, five equals 10. Yeah, you gotta, gotta check, your, check your arithmetic every now and then. Show your work, <laughs> all right? Exactly, show your work. <laughs> um, but Ivar is going to be able to tie up this match one to one, and there's that hunter 
uh, that you were actually saying can just be a little bit slow, struggling to pick up a win there, and entirely due to the fact that the open hand was very heavy. And that, that is frankly one of the, the things that Midrange Hunter struggles with. It's a deck that is very powerful when it is able to establish itself early and get ahead, uh, but can very much struggle to get back into a game when it's behind. That's the reason that Teray has those two copies of Explosive Trap, yes. that he has the Dread Scale. These are cards that, that allow him to potentially claw back into a game when his opponent has a strong start. He didn't find those cards other than the Dread Scale uh, and just did not quite have the tools to deal with Abar's very aggressive opening. I mean, were Ture able to get that Hunter lined up against Abar's Zoo deck, uh, mm -hmm. he would have a very good chance of picking up a win there, but I have a feeling Abar will be actively avoiding that matchup. Well, I think that the, the Hunter deck may be pretty good against Druid too. Uh, it's, it's interesting because uh, Druid can tend to struggle a bit with significant number of mid-sized minions. Mm -hmm. uh, traditionally, the, the sort of ramp Druid styles of decks, which is a lot of what the modern Druid decks are, they really don't like to see Savannah High Man. And oh, of course you know, Therese deck can, can leverage Savannah High Man. It also has Dread Scale and Explosive Trap to deal with a token plan. So it'll be interesting to see how the dynamic of this matchup ends up going. That's true. And the old variants of the Druid decks that uh, were not token-based, you weren't really ever worried about the Unleash the Hounds, you weren't worried about things like Explosive Trap because your minions were so hardy. But in the new builds, those are definitely things that you need to watch out for. And in this case, the Hunter could actually just be positioned specifically to prey on those Druids with Deadly Shot for the Taunt Minions Dread Scale, which takes out Wisps. I think Teray just kept his entire opening hand. He did. So wow. he decided rather than to try and dig for uh, any any quick opening with King's Elec or uh, Knife Juggler. Uh, interestingly, he, he has a, a pretty different early game than most mm -hmm. of the Hunter decks we see. He does not have any copies of Huge Toad, which is a popular two drop, you know, sort of a, a tempo play early in the game. Uh, and Teray is, is more focused on uh, having tools to defeat the, the the decks that are going wide. He has those jugglers we saw he, him combining with the Unleash the Hounds in the last game, which, just like we, we, we said, can be very good against the token plan of the Druid decks. And yeah, this Hunter would not want to run up against either of those Paladins that we saw in oh, no. the last match. That would be very, very bad for Teray. But in this case, up against those decks that do go wide, like the Zoo, like the Druid, it is actually very well positioned. Um, and, and picks up the Unleash the Hounds. Well, the, more importantly, he just has a coin into Dread Scale here, uh, which clears off both of those saplings with its, uh, its end of turn ability, and that kind of forces Abar to react to it. Uh, though Abar has a great answer in the form of Blood Mage plus Cycle Wrath, uh, taking advantage of the uh, Dread Scale's low health. Yeah, that's phenomenal. He also does have the option of playing Wild Growth and simply Wrathing for three, but with the pickup of the Azure Drake in hand, you're automatically curving into five next turn anyway. So I, I think I would like to see him go for the cycle here, considering the rest of his hand is uh, going to be gotten rid of very easily. Yeah, and looking at the texture of how this game is playing out in, in Teray's hand, I'm a little bit surprised by the, his decision to keep his entire hand. And we see, yes, he has Eagle Horn Bow that can answer this here, but he has no other proactive play at all. Now that the Dread Scale was answered, he has that quick shot and that deadly shot that he kept in his opener, mm -hmm. uh, but he's not able to put any pressure on, and the Druid deck is very powerful as it goes to the late game. Yeah, I can definitely understand keeping the deadly shot that uh, works against an aggressive Innervate play in the opening. So, for instance, Innervate Fandral on two, which could be very, very dangerous. You can just deadly shot, get rid of that. Yeah. So I understand that. But the Eagle Horn Bow, there's not many early game minions in the Druid deck. I mean, what are you going to be using it to hit? 1-1 one, one tokens? Yeah, we even see him play the bow here and then just not do anything with it. He does have the ability to use the bow to clear out uh, the Blood Mage Thalos if he wants to, and then Deadly Shot the Azure Drake if he wants to next turn. Uh, or he can use Unleash and clear both of them with his with his Weapon Charge and the the Hounds. But the, the uh, Quick Shot in his hand in particular feels like it's kind of rotting there and is not, not necessarily something that he's uh, particularly 
it's particularly important to the way that his his game plan is is uh, going to play out here. Yeah, the quick shot and the Eaglehorn bow, both doing pretty much the same thing in the early game and against the Druid, both just kind of sitting. Uh, this Hounds is going to be able to clear off the Drake and the Blood Mage Thalnos, though, so not entirely bad for Teray. Yeah. I mean, this ends up working out quite well uh, for Teray, and now Abar does pick up the Violet Teacher. So he could Violet Teacher plus Raven Idol or uh, Wild Growth start to make some more uh, minions here. And then, you know, Teray could possibly use the weapon plus Quick Shot to kill the Violet Teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, Pay attention, class. And we will see exactly that the Violet Teacher come out with the Raven Idol. Choosing to use the Raven Idol here, the Wild Growth doesn't really ramp him to much. Ooh, a Living Roots, That's Claw, and Zag. Nice. So three different options, all of which he can play this turn. He's already seen the uh, the Dread Scale and one Unleash the Hounds. Mm -hmm. So the value of these minions that he's able to spread across the board with the Violet Teacher are much higher than otherwise would be. But he has, still has not seen any copies of Explosive Trap that Trey could be waiting within his hand. Yeah, I, I mean, I think here... Claw is definitely an option, but I think Living Roots is just so strong. After having seen that Unleash the Hounds just the turn before, uh, you know this Hunter is in great position to prevent you from spreading wide, but at some point you're going to have to commit to the board. And I mean, this isn't even that much of a commitment. It's a four drop and two one drops. Yeah, and even if your opponent does deal with this board, you just have the Ancient of War next turn. Especially and, with well, these one-drops. There drops. is Explosive Trap picked up from Teray, so he does have protection from these tokens. Mm -hmm. so yeah, and especially with those one-drops on the board, uh, preventing an easy, deadly shot onto that Ancient of War is really important for Abar. And this is an interesting uh, situation for Teray, because if he attacks the Violet Teacher, he loses the charge. Uh, he's actually just going to go ahead and kill it immediately. He wants to ensure there's no possibility of a Power of the Wild coming out and keeping that Violet Teacher alive. Man, if only Abar had Wisps of the Old Gods right here. <laughs> Four three threes is looking pretty good in this case, especially since Tare is going to be I'm assuming slamming that Savannah Hymen onto the board next turn if he's given the opportunity. Uh, of course, if Abar is just going to run in these tokens to the explosive trap. Oh, he decides to play the Ancient of War, it, and, and this, he does not attack. Yeah, this protects Ancient of War from deadly shot because all of those 1-1s one remain on the board. Uh, now, to raise deadly shot that he kept in his opening hand specifically to deal with mm -hmm. Ancient of War, is no longer effective, and Abar is at, at worst going to get uh, the ability to trade those one ones into potentially the uh, the tokens that come off of the Savannah High Main. Yeah, I really like this. Abar took what looked like a reasonably bad situation and is now what? giving himself a reasonably favorable trade into this High Main, going to be able to clear it off the board entirely if he so chooses, and picks up another Violet Teacher. Um, is he able to proc? The explosive trap this turn, though, is the question, and I think he is. I think we're, yeah, he uses the mulch here, and I think he's going to trade the one ones into both these two twos, and then just go face with the uh, the big tree. This will leave his opponent open to potentially use deadly shot, but that takes three of his mana on uh, on this turn, which prevents mm -hmm. him from actually developing anything particularly exciting. There's also potentially the violet teacher who could eat the deadly shot instead. Oh man, if the Ancient of War can stay up for turn eight coming from Ture with that Call of the Wild, but Job's done. the that, occlusion of that Fiery yeah, Bat. Yeah, that, that Fiery Bat was a huge draw that turn. Enabled the kill command for five damage and actually allowed Ture to clear off that entire board. But Abar, well, he's going to reload that board. Here comes the Daughter of Deathwing. Man, I love the inclusion of Onyxia in these decks. We haven't seen it in play in so long. And finally, it's found It's found a home in the Druid. It's found a home in the Dragon Warrior. And it is performing so well. I just remember when I was playing a Dragon Warrior deck pre-standard, people would be like, why are you playing Onyxia? Why Onyxia? And I'm just like, because Onyxia just generates a ton of board presence for one card. And it's great. And now Onyxia showing up all over the place. And I love it. So... And, and here, this is a, a big opportunity for Abar here. He mm -hmm. has Power of the Wild with five minions in play. He can even uh, swipe, play that Mire Keeper, make a token, and Power of the Wild a huge board. Oh my goodness, this is such a swing for Abar. And what can Ture do to come back from it? He does have an Unleash the Hounds left, so that potentially could give him some uh, staying power, but... 
yeah, that looks like that's going to be exactly what a bar does. He's going to power of the wild, a full board of seven minions, and just, clear off this call of the wild. Yeah, he just sends it face though. He doesn't even need to worry about Leoc here. Mm -hmm. He could, he could clear Leoc to prevent the possibility of an Unleash the Hounds coming out and doing a lot of damage to his board. But going face here puts uh, Terray in a position where well basically, if he doesn't have Unleash the Hounds, he's absolutely dead. And that's exactly what happens. And we thought this Hunter was so well positioned to take out this Druid, but I think some of the keeps in Terray's opening hand really held I, him back that game. I think that Terray was, it felt like his mulligan was playing scared. It felt mm -hmm. like he wanted to ensure he had the answers to what Abar could do, but he didn't give himself anything to do. He didn't put himself in a position to put any pressure on Abar and the power of that Druid deck going into a long game, we just saw, yeah, he, you can clear my stuff over and over. I'm just going to keep powering out yeah. more of it. And the Hunter really shines when it's able to get its own board initiative early with cards like the Fiery Bat, like the King's Elec, really push onto that board presence, and then efficiently clear off your opponent's minions with things like the Deadly Shot, a kill command for five damage if you need it, um, which oftentimes it is used for board clear instead of strictly face damage. So by limiting himself to just a reactive game plan, Teray there, you know, almost kind of not ruined the game for him, but definitely held himself back. He, he put himself in a position to try not to lose rather than a position mm -hmm. to try and win, it felt like. And I mean, that's he spent his early turns of his game just reacting and never actually was putting any Tremble pressure on Abar. Abar ended that game at 28 else. life. That's, I mean, I guess the that's hunter. one steady shot. <laughs> he no literally, attacks it's a hero power, that's it. <laughs> My goodness. All right, well, this is looking like another Potentially favorable matchup for Terea if he's able to get those explosive traps, that dread scale, and his hand is looking okay. But he does decide to mulligan all of it. It's definitely a matchup that the oh, specific good. decisions that Terea made during deck building were intended for this. This is the reason you're playing Juggler Double Unleash. This is the reason you're playing Double Explosive Trap, is to beat a deck like Zoo. And uh, we'll see if that does pay off for Terea here, but so far, uh, those decisions have not gone his way. Abar's hand is looking pretty nice. Uh, he has two copies of that Imp Gang boss, which means this following turn on turn two, he could choose to coin into one and then simply just play the next one on and, turn three. And Imp Gang boss matches up very well against even the specific anti zoo style cards mm -hmm. Trey's included in his deck. Dread Scale is obviously very good against a lot of small minions, but it's not that good against Imp Gang boss. It makes it make another Imp that helps yeah. trade into the Dread Scale. Yeah, Teray has the opportunity to play Dread Scale this turn, but it will kill the front half of Villager, make an Imp, and then just get his Dread Scale killed. Oh no, 50-50 <laughs> potential on this deadly shot here. Could take out the Imp Gang boss. Do you think it's worth it? It's a really tough position for Teray here. He is... You know, playing, like we said, a lot of reactive cards and is not on the board by turn three. This is yeah, super important deal. against Zoo is to actually be on the board early so you don't just have to react to each thing they do. And cards like Deadly Shot get a lot worse as the board gets filled. So this card isn't going to get better as the game goes on. It's just going to get worse. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, Torrey must see that Dread Scale is kind of awkward here. It doesn't really accomplish much. Mm -hmm. Might be his best chance in this game to just Deadly Shot. Uh, but it doesn't look like he wants to go for it. This Hunter deck has just been holding him back so far. He's got two copies of Fiery Bat, two copies of King Zelic, which we have yet to see, and then two Knife Jugglers. So his early game potential isn't great, but there is still something there, but it, it just doesn't seem like he's been uh, hard mulliganing enough for it, maybe? It, it's hard to tell. It feels like a lot of the a lot of the tools he has are, are exceptionally reactive, and he, he's keeping specific reactive cards that aren't necessarily lining up well against what his opponent actually does. Mm -hmm. You know, this dread scale, you know, would be great if his opponent had a bunch of one health minions, but his opponent has a bunch of imp gank bosses, and it matches up very poorly. And now, he, Trey, you know, he, he could attack with this weapon and play dread scale again, but is in kind of the same spot. He kills one of the imp gang bosses, but the remaining imps and uh, the the Shadow Beast take down the Dread Scale, and he's pretty much just where he started. He does have the option to play the Deadly Shot again this turn. It's a little uh, bit better. Two-thirds <laughs> chance that he does take out an Imp Gang boss, but then he's playing inefficiently with his mana. If he wants to use all four mana, the only answer is the Infested Wolf, but... And Wolf oh, is a disaster man. if his opponent has Defender of Argus. Mm -hmm. If uh, Abar had Defender of Argus here and Trey played uh, Infested Wolf, the game might just be over at that point because he just develops such a big board, clears off all of Trey's minions. 
And uh, it looks like Teray may be taking the risk, though, thinking that he needs to develop this so he can actually have some sort of a proactive presence here and chooses to attack into one of the imp gang bosses. This does uh, ensure that there's no easy uh, attack with, with everything, mm -hmm. but... Ooh, <laughs> oh, a sea giant. Okay, that's, sea that's giant. pretty good. Well, Abar now has the option to actually attack into the, uh, the infested wolf with his imp gang boss, mm -hmm. spawns an imp. That would reduce the cost of the sea giant to just four. Uh, he could play that this turn and then still clear off the uh, the tokens from the infested wolf and just have an 8-8 in play and still have a significant board. You know, even more risky for Tare having played that infested wolf. You mentioned Defender of Argus, but Dire Wolf Alpha yeah. facilitates a nice trade. Abusive Sergeant facilitates a great trade off of that possessed villager. So uh, really just... That. So many possibilities for Abar to clear off this infested wolf to expand his own board. And then there would be a nice dread scale turn from Ture, but the light it's very risky in general. Abar, I'm using like, he could even attack with the uh, the possessed villager, spawn the one ones, and still have just some mana left over. <laughs> Alright, well this is going to be a lot of uh, a lot of trading for Abar here. This is setting up a good turn for Ture to potentially play that Dread Scale. So there's now a lot of one health minions in the board, but there's also an 8-8. And he, the Dread Scale doesn't trigger until the end of the turn, mm -hmm. so that does not enable the Deadly Shot. Yeah, unfortunately, Ture doesn't have enough mana to play both the Dread Scale and the Deadly Shot on the same turn, but this Dread Scale is still getting such value. It's going to be able to take out the one health minions, but the Imps are going to spawn at does, least one of the one ones. Does Teray have to kill command the giant and attack with his face? Uh, you know, he's he's just facing so much damage mm -hmm. here. He he does have a beast in play right now. Yes. And it's not clear how easily he's going to get a beast in play in the future. He could play dread scale and quick shot or attack something, you know, clear off some of these minions, but there's just there's so many plays he has, but none of them really efficiently deal with what's actually on the opposing side of the board. How does he come back from that no. if he does choose to? I mean, Teray has 10 damage from Kill Command, 3 from Quick Shot, Steady Shot, 3 from the Eaglehorn Bow. He's got a lot of damage, but no time to play it. Yeah, so he's going to go burn, burn, kill some of your minions. Going to go ahead and take out one of the Imp Gang bosses. He is setting up for the possibility of that good Dread Scale, but Abar, he has... Doom Guard. If he wants to wow. if he wants to protect himself, he can very easily just throw down the Doom Guard, send that damage in. Still left with a, with a card in hand. And again, the the, the Dread Scale does not trigger until the end of the turn. So there's no way to combo mm -hmm. the Dread Scale with Deadly Shot uh, in order to kill a individual big minion on a board that's that wide. So. How unrealistic would it be for Abar to even play the Power Overwhelming this turn? He has a substantial board lead. Um, he knows that Teray has unleashed the hounds. He's mm -hmm. got two explosive so traps. He has that dread scale still. So you want to push that damage while you can. And with the Doom Guard in hand, it's going to be very hard to play the power overwhelming on the same turn as the Doom Guard. Oh, Priestess is actually also kind of funny. That's pretty <laughs> good. Because Priestess can get one of his minions above above one health. And if, if it does that, it survives dread scale. It helps survive unleash. It's also just another minion on the board that Teray can be forced to deal with. Abar also needs to be wary of Explosive Trap. That's yes. a, a big possible threat uh, that Teray can have here uh, that will prevent a significant portion of his board from being able to gain any, any, uh, any inroads. All right. Well, this is somewhat the Dread Scale that dreams are made of. I mean, this is why you put it in the Hunter deck. But is it's, it going to not, be enough? It's not good enough. That's the problem. Oh, but Misha, Misha is quite good here. Misha actually gives Teray uh, a board presence that uh, survives the attack of the leftover one ones here. Is a little bit damaged, but another juggler. Two knife jugglers and a flame juggler. Well, flame juggler, flame juggler is is pretty interesting here because if he uses actually, it's not that great. <laughs> I was just thinking, yeah. If he uses knife juggler, knife juggler, knife juggler plus. Flame Juggler or plus Young Priestess Power Overwhelming, he can very likely kill everything on the other side of the board. Yeah, so he gets three shots from this. All right, that's nice. Oh. Good enough. It's good All right, enough. Yeah, he has go to trade off the, the one ones. But, uh, oh man. And I, I think this, this is gonna be it if Teray does not 
do something to kill multiple minions here. He, he could kill Command plus Deadly Shot, mm -hmm. but otherwise there's Power Overwhelming and Doom Garden to raise hand. If two of his minions live, that's just going to be lethal damage coming out for Abar next shit. turn. So Tere is really on the back foot here, and he has no good way to make any sort of significant inroads here that also advances his own board. He has the Kodo, which has to look attractive. Yeah. But if he plays Kodo here, he's going to die because it only kills one of his opponent's minions. He has to kill two of them. Yeah, Abar has exactly mm. 13 represented. If Tere does kill off one of those two drop minions, Abar has that Doomguard for five, nine from the power overwhelming, and then there would be four left, which which would force Tere to have to clear off two of these minions, but is he, no. can he even win? I mean, we were saying he's playing not to lose. Can mm. can he even possibly win if he uses the deadly shot and the kill command here? I, I don't I don't think there's a real legitimate way he wins either way, but this Kodo seals his fate, kills one of the knife jugglers, but that is not enough. Abar gives the thumbs up as power overwhelming <laughs> plus Doom Guard will send him to Doom the America Summer Doom. Championship. Wow, congratulations to him. Such a dominant performance over Terrence yesterday. And now Abar, after dropping the very first game, is able to take a really clean 3-0 against this Hunter deck. And we were saying, seems well positioned, but I think just maybe Maybe some some issues with the mulligan there, drawing very poorly at some points in time, and it's just really unfortunate for Ture. Yeah, but, but it's great for Avar. Yeah, but great for he, He's Avar. moving on to the Don't summer championship, and uh, I mean, he he navigated those games well. Yes, I, I think that absolutely. You know, a lot of players look at look at a lineup and they say, oh, he's playing you know these standard style of decks, mm -hmm. but they're you know they're they're the standard decks because they're powerful decks. Yes, uh, and he navigated them quite well and was able to take advantage uh, over uh, some of the stumbles that Teray had, specifically with that hunter deck. Yes, but it is not over for Tere. Yeah, that was a winner's bracket match, and it is double elimination. So Tere is going to move down to the lower bracket, but he does still have one more chance at making the America's Summer Championship. Before we head over to Frodan at the blackboard, let's take a quick look at some highlights from the weekend. Yeah, we've had a lot of big matches today. Uh, we saw a Latin American showdown at the start off the day, and uh, it was actually Topo Pablo, or actually I totally screwed that, it's Topo Pablo, sorry, <laughs> who took it down and uh, came back from a deficit two games to zero to swing things around. And then we did see Monsanto taking the second match of the day. His Paladin working out much better for him than a Hot Meowth's Murloc Paladin, which just could not perform as well as he would have liked. And also that Worgen Warrior. And then the Yogg heard around the world that <laughs> incredible comeback. Speaking of comebacks, Roof Trellin came back from a 2-0 down and uh, really enjoyed his time on stage as he made his way to the America Summer Championship. You know, kudos to him. You love to see someone who's got a good attitude about it. He went down. <laughs> Just look at him. He's great. I love him. too early on. <laughs> He's quite the character. Came back and won that match. Just goes to show you're never truly out of it. And Abar of course, just now was able to become the third representative of the Americas region at the Americas Summer Championship, fighting for his chance to go to BlizzCon. Yeah, and we're going to be moving down to the lower bracket. So those players who you saw uh, defeated in those matches will have another chance to punch their tickets to the championship later today. So we see there Tobo Pablo, Monsanto, Roof Trellin, and Abar are half of our top eight. We'll find out who the remaining half are later in the day. All right, we are, like you said, going to be getting into the lower bracket matches. What a day it's been so far. We're going to have a Skype interview with you in just a minute with Abar and Frodan at the blackboard. But first, I really want to just go over that Hunter deck one more time. I, I think there's a reason we haven't seen it brought by many of the other players. It's, just, it's interesting because, I mean, clearly Ture has had a lot of success up to this point to make it to, to, yes. to the top eight or to the top 16, the elimination round. Uh, he must have either had that Hunter deck banned or had been able to find success with it in previous rounds. And it's possible that we just saw some pretty anemic draws from it in these games. Uh, but it's possible that, you know, we saw him, him make a, a couple missteps you know, in, that, in that first game, that Sea Giant play. You know, mm -hmm. it's possible that, that he wasn't really playing quite up to his abilities uh, with his uh, the pressure of the camera match. So m maybe he'll be able to get that Hunter deck through in his uh, decider match later today. 
Yeah, there definitely seemed like uh, maybe the nerves were getting him to him a little bit. Uh, definitely some issues, especially with that Sea Giant in the first game, and then choosing to keep that quick shot as well as the Eagle Horn Bow in the second. Mm -hmm. You could argue that it's a good idea, but also maybe overlapping over each other a little bit. It, it just felt like he was he was playing the deck very reactively, and Hunter's a deck that even in this kind of build, I feel like really needs to play proactively. And keeping a hand of three cost spells, removal spells, and not having a fiery bat, a king zealot, yeah. uh, you know, anything that you can do to pressure your opponent, kind of feels like it's setting yourself up for failure in a matchup that is decided in many in many ways by your ability to pressure them. Just playing to not lose rather than playing to win is kind of what it felt like there. Yeah, and we did actually see yesterday on stream uh, in the Ture versus Chalky match, Chalky did ban that Hunter. Mm -hmm. So we hadn't had a chance to see it yet. And I mean, what do you think Chalky was really afraid of in that case? Uh, Chalky was playing a lineup that uh, it, I believe it included, I'm trying to remember exactly, it had Tempo Mage. Yes. It had Rogue, mm -hmm. uh, much to his chagrin, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and oh, I, I believe he also included the Druid deck. Yes. Uh, and I'm trying to... I'm, Obviously a warrior. I don't know what the warrior was, but it was a warrior. I think yes. it might have been combo warrior. I, I don't I don't actually know if we saw the warrior, but either right. way. It was, it was, uh, of course it, it was banned. Yes, <laughs> of course. Um, which it, it does seem like the hunter was reasonably well positioned against yeah, that I lineup. Think I, I think that hunter in general feels scary for that lineup. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that when you, in particular, my understanding of the, the process that Chalky and the group that he tested with went through was, okay, these are the decks that we think are the strongest against this general field. And the rest of Teray's decks are more of that general field. It's like, okay, I don't necessarily have information on how my decks match up against this Hunter deck. So maybe it's, it's you feel like you have a better idea of how the other matchups go. So it might not necessarily be, I think this Hunter deck is specifically bad for me, but I know how I match up in these others. And uh, those aren't that bad. Well, we'll certainly get to see Ture play again later on today in his decider match in the lower bracket. But first, we've got an interview with Abar, so let's throw it over to Frodan at the blackboard. We have four out of our eight competitors that will be joining us for the America's Championship for the summer season in just a few weeks. And it is Abar from America. Now, I don't know if that's actually how he pronounces his name, so I'm going to go ahead and welcome him for a brief interview. Abar, are you with me? Can you hear me? <laughs> no, he, can't, he definitely can't see me. All right, uh, Abar, if you are there, I'm going to ask one more time. Uh, can you hear me? Are you there? Oh, I, I see I see Frodan. You I see can't me. hear anything Frodan's saying. All right, I'm going to try to sign this. Uh, I, what is I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking at Frodan. Name. He's making some funny... <laughs> Great. He looks dashing, but I can't actually hear a word he's saying. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, uh, I guess we can try to fix the audio real he said quick. Thanks. Uh, so I guess we're going to come back to me. In the meantime, 